everyone, and welcome back for another edition of the Cause of the Week Lunch and Learn. This is your first time tuning in. My name is Christy Kennel, an Associate Director for the Combined Federal Campaign. And this week, we are talking about ending poverty. And many CFC-supported programs are working to end poverty through programs like refugee assistance, clean water access, and economic growth opportunities. We have a few charitable organizations joining us today to share how their work helps to end poverty. Hello everyone, my name is Jacqueline Hernandez, Associate Director with the Combined Federal Campaign. With us today is Mr. Carlos Gomez, Vice President of Resource and Development from Fondos Unidos de Puerto Rico, United Way of Puerto Rico. Hi Mr. Gomez, how are you? Good morning, I'm doing great. Thank you for the opportunity. Of course, thank you for being here. Could you tell us more about United Way of Puerto Rico? Yes, United Way of Puerto Rico has been an active community organization for the last 54 years. We are a 501c3 organization. Uh, you know, we, we file the 990 with the IRS and we also are uh, covered by all the statutes in uh, the territory of Puerto Rico. And we serve a community of 125 community organizations across the island. Uh, the idea is to have a umbrella of uh, um, resource development for these organizations. We also uh, have four main pillars, uh, education, health, and financial stability. Uh, we believe if uh, a person have the, the tools to cover those three areas, they will be, or they could be successful in life. Perfect. Um, could you tell us um, a little bit more about the programs that you have and how they impact the community as well? Sure. Uh, United Way, as, as I said, it, it is a fundraising organization. Um, so we liberate the local organizations from having to do fundraising uh, in, the, in their communities. So the 125 organizations are totally focused on uh, solving problems for the community and also preventing those problems, which is the main key, right? So um, the organizations are always um, evaluated by us before any money is given to them. We have um, audits on their programmatic area, administration, and also their finances. So the 125 organization has to be transparent with us in order to get funds from Fondos Unidos or United Way Puerto Rico. Uh, we also have a very important uh, service from the office in San Juan is the 211 telephone number, just like 411. Uh, you can call 211 to get uh, referrals. So it's not for people just under the 125 organizations, it's anybody can call that number for uh, services. So if you are looking for a wheelchair and you don't know where to find it, you can call 211 and we can match your need with a, post, a potential service from one of our organizations or the 2000 um, agencies that are within the database. Thank you so much. Now, how has the pandemic affected your organization and also the services that you offer? Well, the, the, the main impact definitely is, is economic. And also um, it has been, um, you know, very hard for the organizations that, that serve people because we like the one-on-one -on -one service, face-to-face -face service, and everything needed to stop uh, unless we understood, you know, this, this virus. But the staff at United Way um, of Puerto Rico building never stopped. Myself, I was actually uh, driving a van north and south, west and east, of the island um, because when nobody in Puerto Rico had uh, face masks or gloves, we had. And we decided to share those uh, with, the, with the people uh, mostly need, um, the adult care centers, child care centers, and hospitals. And that was thanks to one of our uh, board members uh, companies that stored those in, in, in the warehouse uh, from another uh, issue back back in the day, and they were like, 
we have we have gloves we have masks so we had a uh, we had a special permit from from the government to be on the road um, sharing those those equipment and those um, you know mask and 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 gowns and and gloves with with people in need also uh, we coordinated the distribution of 18 um, food truck loads of food for for the community um, we also provided care bags for students to go back to school so small you know plastic bags with hand sanitizer masks and information on how to deal with this we created programs for um, mental health and emotional, you know, self uh, resiliency. Uh, all those were provided via Zoom. So we had an umbrella of programs uh, in 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 two in two modes, right? Virtual and also face to face when when you know the rules about gatherings were relaxed. So we've been active throughout the pandemic nonstop. Thank you so much for sharing all that. Um, we wanted to ask you also, what has been the impact of the CFC to your mission? Well, CFC is very important uh, for us. Um, you know, the, the federal employees have always been very generous with United Way. Uh, most of you understand what what is it that we do uh, and always, always contribute to our cause. Um, as a um, former federal em employee myself uh, and also a, a veteran, I know that each dollar, each, uh, each time that you decide to donate to United Way, you are impacting millions of people uh, around the, the United States. But in Puerto Rico, you are impacting 125 organizations and the money stays here. Thank you so much for being with us today and for sharing all this amazing information about your organization as well. Thank you very much. My name is Julie Dudley and I'm one of the associate directors for the Combined Federal Campaign. Our cause of the week is End Poverty. It gives me great pleasure in introducing Thomas Cannon of Concerned Black Men of Richmond, Virginia. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Julie. And federal workers. Can you tell us, Thomas, how did you become involved in Concerned Black Men of Richmond? Okay, uh, I happened to see an article in the newspaper about some men that were working with the youth in the Richmond metropolitan area. So I thought that that would be something that I could do. And I contacted these men and after I had a meeting with them, I was so impressed with what they were doing that I decided to join. So here it is over 31 years later, I am still a member of Concerned Black Men of Richmond. Wow, 31 years. Can you yeah. tell us about your programs and services? Yeah, so we do group mentoring as opposed to one-on-one -on -one mentoring. And uh, we talk to the boys about public speaking, etiquette, respect, dealing with law enforcement, careers, study habits. Uh, we take them on field trips. So we try to do a lot of different things, a lot, a big variety of things to keep the boys motivated. And of course, we encourage them to further that education after they uh, get out of high school. Awesome. And can you tell us a success story with the youth in your program? Yes, the success story that stands out the most was uh, a boy that started our program in the fifth grade and he was being raised by his mother and his grandmother, but he stayed in the program. He was a good kid. He graduated from high school. He was a football player, so he got a football scholarship to a school in the western part of Virginia. Uh, I encouraged him to keep his grades up because the football was a means to an education. His team wasn't that good, so he was frustrated about his team losing a lot, and he kept threatening to quit the team. And I kept telling him, no, you stay there. You do the best you can because your education is the priority. Well, he actually quit the football team 
but his grades were so good that he was able to turn his football scholarship to an academic scholarship. And he finished college in four years and he got his degree. So one of the members and I had promised him that we would be at his graduation. So we drove about six hours to this school and went to his graduation. And after he got his uh, diploma, we went down on the floor and talked to him. And he told us he appreciated everything we did for him. And he said, if you guys were there, my father was never in my life. And he said, I appreciate everything you did because you guys encouraged me. And here I am with the degree now. So I appreciate everything. He just broke down and started crying. So all of us kind of got emotional after that. But, you know, at the end of the day, that made me feel great because, you know, it made me realize that I had an in impact on a young man's life. And that makes you feel good, yes. Thank oh, you, yeah. Thomas, for joining us today and for telling our federal workers and retirees about your organization. Uh, thank you, Julie, and thank you, federal workers, for your generosity, because your generosity keeps concerned Black men out there doing the things that we've been doing for over 34 years. So thanks again. Poverty can be defined by many things. For some, poverty means living without clean water and accessible food, and for others, this may mean not having access to basic health care or education. A big shout out to all the organizations who were able to join us this week and the work you do within our communities. How can you be the face of change? Well, your gift can help protect communities and families by supporting CFC charities striving to end poverty. Invite your colleagues to support